Good day, students. Uh, the topic for today will be angle of elevation and depression. When we talk about elevation, elevation has to do with something that is above you, an object that is above you. Let's say, for instance, the sun. The sun is obviously above you, and you have to look upward to the sun. So that type of scenario is what you call elevation, anything that is above you. Now, when we talk about depression, depression is directly opposite to elevation. It is something that is below an observer in such a way that you have to view downwards uh, to that object. So we want to look at the differences between angle of elevation and depression and to solve some practical examples based on that. Now, if you look upward at an object, say, let's say the top of a pole, the angle formed between the horizontal, which is uh, the angle that is formed between the horizontal view and your line of sight is called the angle of elevation. Typically, a typical example is the altitude of the sun. When we talk about altitude, altitude has to do with height. Now, to illustrate this point further, let's look at this uh, diagram of this picture. We have this observer here, this person here stands as an observer, and this line here, this straight line, is a normal horizontal view. You know, when you're walking, you don't look upwards, neither do you look downwards, you look straight. So that view is what they call the horizontal view. Then, this is the object that is above this uh, observer. This observer has to look upward to view this object. So this view is what they call the line of view. So the angle, in, the angle between the line of view and the normal horizontal view, this angle here, is what they call the angle of elevation. So bear in mind, the angle between the normal horizontal view and the line of view at which you look at that object is called the angle of elevation. So over to the next slide. If you look downwards, now we're considering the angle of depression. So if you look downward at an object, the angle formed between the horizontal and your line of sight is called the angle of depression. Like I said earlier, this is in direct contrast to the angle of uh, elevation. Now, in this uh, diagram or in this picture, we have the same observer here, and obviously this is the normal high view or the normal horizontal view. And uh, you have this object here that is below this observer in such a way that the observer will have to sight this object that downward. Now, the angle between the normal horizontal view and the line of sight is what they call the angle of depression. And so, we want to practicalize this using real life scenarios. Now, let's look at this uh, farm. Let's uh, I'm an observer, for instance, and this farm is above me. I will have to look upward to this farm, obviously. Now, the angle that is formed between my normal horizontal view, this is my normal horizontal view. You know, when I view an object straight, you know, it's called the normal horizontal view. So the angle between the normal horizontal view and the object, the line of sight, the object that is above me, is what they call the angle of elevation. I repeat that again. The angle between the line of sight at which I sight an object that is above me, in this case the fan, and the normal horizontal view, the angle between these two, is referred to as the angle of elevation. Now let's now look at the angle of depression. Now I have an object that is below me, the uh, coke, uh, the pot coke, coke here, and I am an observer, for instance. Now, now I have to look at this object that is below me. I have to look at it downward. Now the angle of depression is the angle between, once again, my normal horizontal view. And the angle, so, and the object, sorry, and the object that is below me is what we refer to as the angle of depression. I'll take that again. The angle of depression is the angle in between the normal horizontal view and the line of sight at which I view this object that is below me is what we call the angle of depression. So now let's now look at the following examples. Now we have example one. Now, if you look at this one, it is just a mathematical model of the real life scenario of what we have. It is pictures 
the what we have here mathematically. So that's what we that's what this diagram is is um, that's what it stands for. So this here is the angle of depression, the angle of depression between the normal horizontal view and the line of sight. So now it's on one here. The angle of depression of a boat from the top of a cliff is 58 degrees. If the cliff is 10.5 meter high, how far is the boat from the foot of the cliff? Now, obviously, this is a world problem, uh, so we have to interpret it in terms, uh, in mathematical terms. So now we have to look at where the boat is. Now, this is the cliff. This is the cliff here. The cliff here runs down vertically, and this is a boat here. This is a boat, like I told us, this is a mathematical model of what we have in real life uh, situation. Now, this is a cliff here, and this is a boat here, because the question here says that the angle of depression of a boat from the top of a cliff. So this is the top of a cliff, so this is the boat here. Now, the angle between them is 58 degrees. Can you see the angle between the normal horizontal view of that cliff and the line of sight? And the line of sight, so the angle in between is what they call 58 what degree. So now, if the cliff is 10.5 meter high, so this is 10.5 meters, that is the height of the cliff. Remember, this is a boat here. So this is a cliff which is measured to be 10.5 meter. Now the question here says, how far is the boat from the foot of the cliff? Remember, this is the top of the cliff. And this here is the foot or the base of the cliff. Now this here is a boat here. So we want to look at the distance between the boat here and the foot of the cliff. So the so in the invariably we'll be looking at we'll be looking for the line AB and we we'll denoted line AB to be our X. Our line AB stands for the distance between the boat and the foot of the cliff. Now before we move on to the next slide. Now, let me explain some terms here before we move on to the next slide. Now, obviously, this is the right angle triangle. So, this angle means that uh, we have it to be 90 degree. Now, this is 58 degree originally. Now, this is 58 degree. The reason is because the both angles are alternate. They are alternate to one another. So, if this is 58 degree, this also will be 58 degree. Now, here is 32 degree because the angle here stands for 90. The angle here, it is angle 90. So if you have 58 degree, it means for us to sum up to, to angle 90 degree, it means this angle will be 32 degree. So it means you'll be subtracting 58 degree from 90 degree to get 32 degree. So we have 32, 32 degree here, we have 58 degree here, and we have 90 here. If you sum it up together, it's going to give us 180 degree. So now, okay, so we're looking at uh, considering this angle here, which is angle 32 degree. Now, if you look at the angle 32 degree here, the side that faces angle 32 degree, because we are considering this angle here, the side here that faces this angle of consideration is the opposite. We are talking in terms of trigonometry now. Now, the longest side here is the hypotenuse, and uh, this is the adjacent. The adjacent, you know, is always, uh, is always directly adjacent, or is, or is always directly at right angle to the uh, opposite here. So we have the opposite because it faces the angle of consideration, which is 32 degree. We have the longest side, which is the hypotenuse, and we have the adjacent. So now over to the next slide. So we'll be looking at 10, 32 degree from your trigonometry. Tan theta is always equal to opposite all over adjacent. And remember our line AB is the opposite, is opposite to the angle 32 degree, so which is line AB here, all over the, um, all, uh, line AB here, which is opposite, all over the adjacent here, which is 10.5. So that's why we have it to be 10, 32 degree, equal line AB all over 10.5. Remember line AB is opposite, and 10.5 here is adjacent. And we have denoted our line AB to be equal to X. So that's why we said 10, 32, 10, 32 degree is equal to X all over 10.5. So by you cross multiplying, you have uh, 10.5 times times 10 32 degree equal x times 1. If you cross multiply, you have it here, x times 1, which is equal to x, equal 
10.5 times tan 32 degrees. So we have it here. And in your four figure table, or if you use your calculator, if you look at the equivalent of tan 32 degrees, it's going to give us 0 0.6249. So tan 32 degrees is equal to 0 0.6249 times 10.5. So if you multiply the two terms together, the two numbers together, you are going to have it to be 6.56145 meters. So once you represent it in two decimal places, so this is your first decimal place, the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, this is the fifth, and so on. So we're looking at our answer in terms of two decimal places. So we have 6.56. Now this is one here, this is not up to five. So it means we are not going to run it up, or rather we are going to run it off. So that's the reason why we have it to be 6.56. If you have this to be 5 above, it means that we are going to have 1 to this, and this will have given us 6.56. But because we have 1 here, which is not up to 5, then it means we have to run it off. So that's the reason why we have it to be 6.56 in two decimal places. So I hope so far so good we've been able to look at um, um, angles of elevation and depression. So if you have any uh, thing, anything you're not sure of, tomorrow's interactive class, you can just let me know. You can just let me know. So God bless. Thank you very much.